In this one, we're going to create a HTTP request class, and this will act as a container for all of our super global so that we've got all that information available to us all the way through our application. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own, but we're going to base it on the Symfony HTTP foundation request because, say for example, we want something a bit more complex than what we've created later on as our application, our framework progresses, then we can easily swap it out for that one because we'll have built it using a similar kind of interface. But if we don't need that complexity, then we'll have built something a lot smaller and a lot lighter. So what am I talking about when I say the Symfony HTTP Foundation Component Request Class? This is it here, you can navigate to this page and basically we're gonna create this request class or something based on this. And as you can see, it's constructed using all of the super global. So we'll have all that information available to us. And the way that this works here is they use a static factory method, create from globals and so if we copy this kind of interface if we have the same method then if we do decide we want to switch out to use the symphony one later on to have that extra functionality then we won't need to change much of our code because we'll have built it using a very similar interface back in our code in the index.php file let's go and create the objects that we wish we had and then we can go and actually create those classes that we need based on that. So what we're saying is we want to create a request object and the way we want to request it is by using a static factory method on a request class. So we'll just do this like so. Double colon is for calling static methods. If you're a bit unsure on some of this stuff then just go and uh, do my object oriented PHP course. I cover all of this stuff in there constructors, static methods, etc., static factory methods, all of that good stuff. The method that we want, we're going to name it exactly the same as a Symphony HTTP foundation method, and it is create from globals. And just an interesting thing to note is that under the hood, Laravel also uses the Symphony HTTP foundation component. And so it's good for me to show you this stuff and show you how it's working under the hood, even though we are going to create our own version of that. Okay, so far so good. Now this request class is going to be part of our framework. And so for that reason, we're gonna put it in our framework folder and it's gonna come under a namespace of HTTP. So inside of the framework folder, create another one called HTTP. And then inside of there, we'll create our request class. And then here we'll add our namespace. So if I go back to my composer JSON file, just to remind myself of what namespace we used here, it's Gary Clark framework, and then it will be HTTP. Okay, so you're probably using a different namespace, but just make sure that it matches up with what you specified in your auto loading in your composer JSON file. So class request, we need a public static function called create from globals. And this will return an instance of itself. So here we can say static. And so here we just want to create an instance of itself using the PHP super globals. So let's go and create the constructor first. And here I'm going to use constructor promoted properties because I'm using PHP 8 and above. If not, you'd have to do it old school where you go and pass in the variables and then create the properties separately up here and then assign them in this part. But I won't need to do that because I'm using PHP 8. Uh, I recommend you do the same because we're using Docker here. So um, my Docker setup is using PHP 8 and above. At the top here, I'm just going to temporarily paste in the super global so that I know what I'm creating here. And so I'm going to use public read-only properties because one of the advantages of doing this this way is that we grab those super globals. And so then we have a snapshot of the state of our application, the state of the request at the time that is, is received. And by actually storing these values as properties on this request class, we know that they can't change and they can't be tampered with. Whereas the values in the actual super globals, they can be changed. And so here we're making sure that we have actually preserved those values as they are when the request is received. 
And again, because I'm using uh, PHP Think 8.1 and above, I can use read only properties, which means that they get set, but then they can't be changed afterwards. And that also means that I won't actually need to set them as private and add a lot of getters and setters. So it means we're writing less code as well, which is pretty cool. So public read only, and this will be an array. And so the first one is get, and so we shall just call this get params. And so these are your query parameters that you would see in the address bar. We'll have a look at them shortly. Next, we'll do the same thing for the post parameters. And these are the parameters, the values that you would receive from submitting a form, for example. So we have cookies. All of these are arrays, by the way. And then finally, we have our server variables. And we'll go and dump those out shortly to see what kind of values that we see in there. Okay, so this means that here we can just say return new static and then just pass in these super globals in that very order. Okay, so I can remove this comment here. That's not needed anymore. I'll just scroll down so that you can see that create from globals method. Let's go back to our index.php file. So we need to make sure that we're getting the correct request here. So this is the one that we're looking for, Gary Clark Framework HTTP. And then let's just dump it out and see what values we have stored on this request. Over to the browser and refresh. Okay, so here are our cookies. You see the get parameters is empty at the moment and post parameters. Uh, we'll fill those in a second. Let's have a look at our cookies. So we have the PHP session ID. That should be recognizable to you. Uh, this one is one which is set by uh, PHP Storm. Let's have a look at our server variables. So there's quite a lot more here. Uh, the interesting ones, the ones that we're going to use maybe down the bottom here, so request URI, so we're going to use that for our path info and we're going to be able to use that in order to find the controllers, the handlers for our requests. So I'll show you how that changes. If I went and changed this to foobar, for example, and then we went and looked at our server variables again, and so you see that our request URI is now foobar. How about if I added a query parameter, for example, if I say name equals Gary, you'll see that our get parameters now has a value in there. So we have name equals Gary in there. And then if we go and look at our server variables, you'll see that our request URI also has that query parameter appended onto it. You'll see a lot of other interesting stuff here. You can see the server name, the ports that we're using, server software, document URI and so all sorts of useful information here that we'll be able to use and we'll be able to access from our request class or our request object inside of our application. And if you think about what we covered on things like encapsulation in my object-oriented PHP course, this is a perfect example. All of the data regarding the request, it's all held in one place. It can't be tampered by any code elsewhere in our application. And we're not having to handle a load of loose variables like you do with super globals, which can actually be altered. So this is a perfect example of encapsulation.